As I go through the month of December participating in a 10,000 kettlebell swing challenge, one of the things that kind of came to mind were the amount of people that I see doing kettlebell swings incorrectly. And there's some reasons behind it. A lot of people love to throw themselves into a squat swing, as I call it, because it's what they're familiar with. Um, getting a kettlebell swing down is really kind of one of those things that takes some time. It's something that can be a little bit difficult to learn, especially if you don't have the foundational movements down that you really need to practice. So the first thing that I always talk to somebody about with a kettlebell swing is something called a hip hinge. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, pay attention, because this is a precursor movement to so many different things that we do when working out or in the gym, or even, as I say, getting in a universal athletic stance. So with a hip hinge, basically what it is, is it is the ability to bend forward at your hips without your back basically rounding. So you want a neutral spine. So here, knees are slightly bent. You're pushing your butt back and coming back up. Sometimes what I'll do is for people to practice this, I often take say a broomstick, a pole, a PVC pipe, and I have people hold it like this try to bend forward, keeping that nice and in line with your head and basically your tailbone the entire time. That's one of the biggest foundations for a kettlebell swing. One thing I also say to people is that if you cannot perform a proper deadlift, kettlebell swinging should not be in your exercise repertoire. And that's because you need to know how to deadlift um, to kind of generate that force, but also to have the movement pattern down a little bit more. However, a deadlift cannot just be turned into a kettlebell swing. Um, a kettlebell swing is not just a fast deadlift because there's a period of contract and relax that happens. Um, it's not just like you are going and grabbing, grabbing a bar, okay? So if I'm gonna grab the kettlebell, creating tension and pulling up like we do during a deadlift or getting here and pulling up. Um, a kettlebell swing is a quicker movement and typically in order to produce force, there is a period of contract and relax. Now, one of the big things that I often see with kettlebell swings, and there's a few things, there's a different types of kettlebell swings. Um, you know, one that we see often is something like the American swing, people basically come overhead. And that's not something I typically program for my athletes. And also I don't do it very often, so hence why I'm not very good at it. Um, I don't necessarily care for it. It can be done, and if you do it right, it can be a great workout. But why not get the foundation first of doing a regular style kettlebell swing? With that overhead swing, I often see people hinge on their backs and use their arms a little bit too much. Um, it's not something we want to do. It's something that we want to kind of make this movement and make it fluid and make it athletic. It's an awesome exercise to really get moving and to gain some power, conditioning, athleticism for sport, or even if you just wanna get yourself in better shape. So what are the other things that I also see? What I also see with the kettlebell swing is people start doing like a squat swing, okay? Where they're going into a squat every time they swing. And that's not necessarily how it should be done. We should really be focusing on more of a hinge swing, which I basically say, think that you have a triangle, okay? So above your knees, you now have a triangle there. That kettlebell needs to return to that spot every time you swing it. So why not a squat swing? A squat swing, swing can put a lot of pressure on our back. It's also just not what we're looking for. We're looking to generate power from our hamstrings, our glutes, maybe we'll throw a little back in there, um, but our posterior chain as we swing. And really that's what should be doing a majority of the motion. Some other things I also see with a swing, people use their arms more than they use that motion of that hip hinge. The whole reason of a swing is to use here. Make sure you do, squeeze those glutes, generate some power. So what should a swing sequence look like? It should be smooth shouldn't be jerky. It shouldn't be something that you see kind of out of sequence. There should be a good sequencing to it. And since I've been practicing a lot, I might be a little sore, so they may not look that beautiful, but let's go ahead and give it a shot and show you what it should look like. So sometimes I'll start with the kettlebell a little bit in front of me. I bring it to me, I come up. And what you're gonna notice is I'm not bending my knees all that much. I am basically aiming for this triangle and I'll turn to the front and then I'll turn sideways. So I'm aiming for the triangle every time I do this. 
okay? The bell is not getting too far in front of me. And I'm going along with it, okay? So basically, it's a hinge pattern. And if you wanna see what I mean by hinge, okay? A hinge is here, okay? And I can go all the way down as if I'm doing kind of a deadlift here. But a hinge is where I'm just using that hip hinge movement to really get a good swing, okay? All right, some other things that I sometimes cue, think about at the top, engage your lats to pull that bell back down. But it shouldn't be necessarily throughout the whole range. Remember, contract, relax, power. You don't wanna be stiff all the time. So think about that when you go into a kettlebell swing. Practice a hip hinge, practice a deadlift. Make sure that you can do this before you go ahead and swing. And make sure that you can simply do this. Think about giving yourself a hip check. All right, guys. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know.